So you're working on a TV show, or an indie feature, or a big budget feature. Think about how much time you spend dealing with scripts. Reading them, breaking them down, marking them up. And just when you think you have a handle on everything, a new script revision gets dropped on your lap. This happens a lot. You get a revision, you have to figure out what's changed, and you recopy the same notes over and over and over again. So we thought, what if an app could do all that for you? Meet Scriptation. Here's how it works. You open a script and you start making notes. You can highlight, underline, type, draw. You get the idea. And when the revised script comes out, you can import all your notes into the new draft. Scriptation will even tell you if something's been changed deleted. So what are you waiting for? Get Scriptation. Now available in the App Store. All right. How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm happy to welcome you to what I'm sure may be your 10th Zoom meeting of the day. My name is Pete Chapman, and I'd like to warmly welcome you to our Scriptation uh, we're going to call it a Zoominar, being prepared to go paperless. Um, our job, our conversation today is going to be centered around how Scriptation helps us to do our jobs and the, few, and the features that we use most. I know, um, speaking firsthand, that uh, learning a new tool might be intimidating, particularly when you're as particular as filmmakers and storytellers are. But I promise that the learning curve is small and you'll find that scriptation allows you to work in whatever way that you've worked before while being paperless. We invite you to add questions to the Q&A box, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen. Um, and also to consider how this functionality can apply to your specific job, because it's not only for directors, even though the three of us happen to be today. Um, now, no matter what your expertise, we all know that workflow and systems can be the difference between getting what's in your head on the screen 
I use scriptation both for half hour comedies like Insecure and Silicon Valley, as well as for one hour dramas like Grey's Anatomy and A Million Little Things. And scriptation supports my workflow on the different genres. And we probably will talk about that a little bit later. Um, over the past three years that I've been using the application, I've seen it expand from directors to almost virtually every other department on a film set uh, or on a TV show. And uh, most recently, I'm actually seeing a lot of actors use it, including my wife, who you may have seen in the photos in the slideshow. Um, as we move through our conversation, I'd like everyone to know that uh, the way I kind of fall into this trio here is that I'm much like everyone that's joining uh, the panel today. I use scriptation, but probably uh, not to the fullest. I know from conversations with Spiller and Val that there's a lot more that I could take advantage of. And so I'm looking to kind of learn along with you as we move through our time. So we'll learn a few tips, a few hacks, and some ways to improve and elevate our respective creative workflows. So let's introduce these lovely people that we have here in the Brady Box Bunch, a Brady Bunch box here. Um, Val, Valerie Weiss with the lovely hat has directed 20 episodes of television in almost all genres, including most recently Outer Banks on Netflix, Prodigal Son, Why Women Kill, in addition to three features. She was prepping a studio feature in Vancouver when COVID stopped us all in our tracks and provided this reset to look at the ways we work. Valerie is also a scientist, that's correct, with a PhD from a virology lab and a master's in medical sciences from Harvard Medical School. So she's taking this virus and safety on set very seriously. She continues to be thoughtful about our industry's environmental impact, which is what got her using scriptation in the first place. She's talked to Steve Vitolo, the inventor and CEO of Scriptation for years, and uh, they've conversed about ideas for how to optimize Scriptation and how we can spread the word to our industry and is thrilled to finally have such a big platform to do so like today. So welcome Val. Um, and the gentleman uh, with- Oh, the without other a hat. The spectrum. <laughs> the only one without a hat, um, Michael Spiller, but we will, uh, kindly refer to him as Spiller, has been making movies since he was 12. Uh, so that's roughly, there we go, roughly uh, 20 years ago he got his start. Uh, after graduating from SUNY Purchase, he started his journey crewing on music videos, um, movies and documentaries before eventually becoming a DP, shooting classic independent features like The Unbelievable Truth and Walking and Talking. After transitioning to shooting TV on The Adventures of Pete and Pete, which is one of the better titles I've come across. Um, <laughs> Spiller's first directing assignment was on Sex in the City. He hung up his light meters after moving to LA in 2001, and he has directed over 175 episodes of TV, including more than 20 episodes each of Scrubs, Modern Family, which we saw in the hat, uh, and The Mindy Project. Uh, Spiller won both an Emmy and a DGA award for the Halloween episode of Modern Family. So, applause to you both. Thank you for joining uh, us and, and sharing your, your information and your, and your process. Uh, how did you both learn about scriptation? Sorry, I'll go first. Um, so I think it was about three or four years ago, I was transitioning from features to television and I just knew how fast you have to work. I mean, you have to work really fast in indie features too, but um, I just really wanted to be very prepared. And so I sent an email out to like all the veteran directors I knew and said, what do you guys use? Like, I've got my notebook, but I want pictures and maybe occasionally music. Like, how do I get everything in one place? Because I literally wanted to like watch my movie as I read the script. and you know, people didn't really have an answer. You know, some people said Artemis or Shot Designer, but those were just like auxiliary tools. They're, they weren't doing what I, I was asking for. And so I was directing Scandal. I think it was my second year of doing TV and Darby Stanchfield, who played Adley, she was going to direct an episode after me and she, we were talking, she wanted to sort of like unofficially shadow me on my episode and she showed me scriptation, which she was using as an actor, 
because it's so powerful because with one like toggle of a button, all your lines are instantly highlighted and every new draft, which is, you know, a lot in Shondaland, you get a lot of drafts. Um, she could up, up <laughs> she could, uh, you know, get her notes transferred in seconds, saving her so much time. So she showed that to me and I realized the whole cast was using it. And I was like, oh my God, I need to learn this. So she taught me how to use it. And I have not touched paper since then. Um, so I am just like such a big fan of scriptation. Awesome. And how about you, Spiller? And I'll add, it sounds like you learned the same time because I had an episodic orientation in 2017 that Spiller gave um, as one of the directors. And I think Darby was at that. Uh, oh, at it was the exactly the same time then. Yeah. So, so basically all roads lead to Spiller is what you guys That's right. That's what we're really saying. It's okay. Um, well, I mean, I, uh, I, I found scriptation because I had been looking for a perfect app to, to do my, my prep and my shooting and my post work uh, digitally. I just, I was tired of being so wasteful of paper and so inefficient and especially copying and transferring my notes manually was just, you know, such a, a stupid waste of time. Um, so there was nothing really that, that worked effectively. I was using I annotate, I think, and you know, a new draft would come out and I'd just have to manually copy my digital notes and then drag them over or retype them. Uh, so it didn't save anything except paper, really, which, you know, is a start. Then someone, a mutual friend, put Steve and I together and she said, Spiller's the most techie guy I know, just, he'll, you know, he'll give you lots of ideas for your app. And I tried it out and thought it was great and became a beta tester and, you know, promoted on every job I'm on and, you know, it's, and I continually discover new things about it. So uh, it's like directing itself, you know, I'm never going to stop learning how to do the job and I'm, and scriptation just keeps offering more and more possibilities for me. Awesome. So I, I feel like it's probably universally uh, the most exciting feature for people is the transferring of notes. Um, that's what sold me on it. And you kind of just mentioned it, Spiller. So um, let's check out a quick video about that before you do a demonstration for the folks. Hi, I'm John Scott and I'm a producing director and this is my scriptation. Before I started using scriptation, I would put all my notes on my scripts the old fashioned way. I'd use post-it stickers, I'd use highlighters, I'd use pens, whatever it takes to keep myself organized. But with television, there's always multiple drafts of scripts coming in. So what that would mean is I'd have to take the old draft and all my notes and all my post stickers and transfer them over to the new draft, which usually means I would lose an hour or two out of my production day. Now that I'm using scriptation, I can take my old draft, I have all my notes, and I can transfer them to the new draft in seconds. So here's my current draft. As you can see, I've got a lot of notes, I've got a lot of annotations, there's even storyboards, there's pictures, everything I need is on the script. So here's what I do. I open up the new draft, and I hit the transfer button. I hit the previous draft, which has all my annotated notes, and then I select begin. Now you can see, in a matter of seconds, all my old notes have been transferred into the new draft. Using note transfer and scriptation is awesome. In the end, it has saved me hours and hours of note transferring time, and that's a benefit for me because I can spend more time in production or I can spend more time at home. So I'm going to share my screen here and show you guys that fully in real time. So you guys seeing that? Yep. Okay, so this is a just a demo script. It's got lots of notes on it just for the purposes of this demonstration. So we'll say that a new script has come out. So go to my email and it's conveniently right there waiting for me. I hit this, that little button right there, right in that upper right hand corner and choose which app to open it with. And now I'm gonna choose which, which folder to put this in. Demo where this is. So. Now let's move this latest draft, which is the shooting draft, 
can see down here. But it's got no notes on it. So the, the, the script is in there. It's got no notes. So you go right up to the top. Select transfer. Now go to the previous draft there, the table draft. Hit begin. And now it's importing all those notes. It's going to give me a little status window that pops open. Okay, so there's 137 important annotations, nine changed, three deleted. I'm not going to review it right now. So this is now the, the shooting draft, but it's got all my notes. So the very first thing I probably want to do is just change that, my little quick referencing there, so I don't mistake it anymore. But I thought it might be helpful to sort of go right into showing you guys how to make sides now. So it's, here's my, my, my shooting draft. Again, in the upper right-hand corner, there's this little, uh, looks like four little pages there, which brings up your thumbnails, right? So let's say that I, I want to make sides from this script. You hit sides, which is up here. Now I can select the scenes I'm going to shoot. So let's say it's scenes three, and I've made these sort of the scene numbers big in my, you know, in my in my notes, just so that it's easier to do this very thing. The three, five, and scene six. I hit make sides. I've got to name it. Let's call it day one. Save it. I'm going to save it in the same folder. And now it's done. But what if I'm not shooting, the, the, the day's not shooting in that order? So I need to rearrange these pages so it makes sense, right? So we're going to start with scene five. So I hit edit and that upper right hand corner again. And I just select the pages I want to move and I move them over. So it's a press and a hold and you move that over. And so Spiller, a couple questions. First, are you doing this all on an iPad? Yes, this is all on the iPad. And are you, can you tell us about annotations? and uh, how you kind of put together your different, um, like your larger scene numbers so you can easily identify everything? Sure, now, that's super easy. So I'll go back to that shooting draft, okay? And I'm back in full, full screen view now. So the, that larger number there, that's just a text box. So the text box is one of the tools, this one over here, click on that. And now I can, anywhere I touch, there'll be a, an icon. And basically, one of the beautiful things about scriptation is that all of your annotations are infinitely adjustable. So this little thing here, that brings up the, the color thing. So I have a bunch of preset items here. So maybe I want this one to be a green background with black text. And touching the text size now, we'll make this 18 points. So now where this green thing is right here, sorry, I'm trying to use this other mouse to highlight that. I can just start typing. This is a text box. When you tap the text box, it selects it. I can move it, I can scale it differently drag it wherever I want and drop it. So same thing with those big numbers. I just, I chose a large font and a different color. So it would pop easily and I drop it in there. Gotcha. But you know, just going down the bar real quickly. I mean, there's, there's underlining, highlighting, of course, just doing all these things in the same place. There's a squiggly line underline, which is super cool. And again, the, I have the red squiggly line selected, but if I go down to this little inspector button there, that red one right there, 
and press it. I can choose different presets. I can make it more transparent if I want. So I can do all of that stuff there. And strike through. Like, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna say that word anymore. So just strike through that. These little sticky notes are super cool because I can put a note to myself here and just typing gibberish as one does. <laughs> And now that's hidden. So if I if I touch that icon, it'll pop open again. Then I touch anywhere else on the screen, it disappears. So it's a good way to have sort of reminders and evidence that not everybody sees. Because often you're sharing, you know, you're showing your script to someone. You're walking up to talk to an actor after a take and pointing to a line of dialogue. You don't want to say, you don't want them to see that note that says they're too big in that scene. Right. Um, what, what's really interesting too, um, just as the the person looking to use it more, is that whatever workflow you already have can kind of be uh, transferred over to this. So like, I I still walk around with the blue, red, green, black four mm -hmm. color ink pen, and I make notes for actors in red and camera in blue, and now I can do all that here. And you also don't have to have a bunch of post-it notes flying everywhere and tabbed uh, stickies to, you know, get to where you want in the script, which is making your script almost like uh, 200 documents in one. Yeah, and, you know, it's great because you do have, again, like I, I touched the pen app just, just now. And, and there's a bunch of presets on the bottom, at the bottom of the screen there. Can see those presets, right? So you could have that red, green, blue, you know, just waiting at your fingertips and you quickly select it and you can make that handwritten note wherever you like. Also, this is one of my favorite presets. Um, when I'm done shooting, part of my process when I was working with paper was, you know, I'd have these little tabs showing me the scenes, you know, sticking out over the margin, showing me the scenes I was going to shoot that day. And when I finally finish a scene, I would almost ritualistically pull off that little tab and then stick it somewhere in the script. But now I, I do this. Well, actually, that's the wrong. That's the that's my sides one. So good. So I'll show you. That's that's not what I meant to have happen. I'm going to select it. We'll go to Inspector. Go to this preset. And it's like that. So that's that's my uh, my preset. I'm done thing. That's great. And, and also it's just a good demo that you can change things after the fact, you know? So again, I just made that big red mark there on the screen. I can select it, I can delete it, I can make it come back, uh, I can hit inspector and change the color, change the style, I could make it an arrow, I could make it a, a dash line, I can, you know, all sorts of cool things you can do. And there's awesome. all the, the that order thing you see that there. It's like I haven't even gotten into that. That's just like how, you know, how it it it, it relates to other annotations you've made. So these things can stack up on top of each other. It's it's hours of fun, guys. <laughs> so that that's a good uh, a thorough example. You have all these annotation options available to you, to whether you want to type on the uh, script itself with text or you want to write with the pencil, um, you have the ability to interface and interact with the app as you would in with paper. And then um, should we talk about maybe facing pages uh, at this point, Val? Sure. That's a Val do that. Sure. Um, that was here, excellent. sorry. I have such script envy for Spiller. He knows that. <laughs> but, uh, I'll show you guys some fun facing pages. I'm going to share my screen right now. So this is um, from Outer Banks, episode eight. They had a pretty massive, um, had a lot of action in this show, but a pretty massive end sequence where an airplane was facing off against a 1970s VW camper van we affectionately called the Twinkie. And so it was really important to have amazing communication on set because we had three days on a very hot runway to shoot all of this. So, you know, I start with my, you know, my script that is annotated with all sorts of goodies. And, but to include all the visual information that I want, that's, that's not enough. So I use facing pages. 
And so I insert these, you know, ahead of time, like Rob Morrow showed you. And I've got, you know, some reference photos of the plane and the, the camper van. And then on my second blank page before that scene, I've already inserted a storyboard um, by Court Chu, who's amazing, um, already in there so that you can see sort of how I'm going to use this page. I'm going to go ahead and insert a shot list and an overhead uh, in here and show you guys how to do it. So you go to um, this little, sorry, this little photo icon. I guess you guys, I have to show you with the mouse here. Can everyone see that? That's the photo icon. And you click on that and I go to my photo library and I've preloaded it with a, an album. So you can make an album for each show you're doing. And so I preloaded it with what I'm going to use today. And I can bring in, you know, this uh, really nice shot list that also, that also has, oops, sorry, I don't think I selected it properly. So, oh, I have to hit done. And then I have the shot list with images in it that, um, that is already uh, that I already assembled in Microsoft Word, which I don't always do, and I'll show you because there's so little time. So sometimes I'll just make everything in scriptation. So another way I might go about this is going back to that same folder, and here's an overhead that I made using um, the tools in scriptation, which you know works just as well. So. You can go to uh, your different shapes. So under the line, you can also get rectangles. And you can just go ahead and draw. You can draw things and do it right there. So often I'll do that if I'm trying to explain something on the fly. Um, the other thing that I like to do, because I like to do as much as, po as possible in scriptation, I will make my shot lists right in my facing page. So I will um, just start typing shot list one drone shot and then just you know and then I can make it bigger I can move it wherever I want I can cut and paste it to another page but for me I like that I don't have to go to another program because it's it's all about speed when you're doing you know big shows with lots of big sequences so and where did you thing, how did you add the page um how did I add the facing page yes um I think did, did we show the Rob Morrow the you mean the blank facing page? Did we already show that video? No. Yeah, we did, but but we could. Uh... I can show you right now. Um, so, so if you go to the top of your scriptation, those four little boxes um, right at the top. I don't know if you can see my cursor. That's how you get to see all of your pages. And so you can go here and hit edit at the top. And then you can just do add, and you can add all sorts of different pages. So you can put graph paper in there. You can put a picture. You can make your whole page one set of location photo that you shot. And then you can draw in your little people, whatever you want to do. I'll just do something plain though. And you add that page there, then you click on it, and then you press it, and you can just move it to wherever you want it. And you can also automate it so you add a blank facing page before every single page in your script. Uh, for me, that makes my script too long. I don't want a blank page between each scene, so I like to just add it where I need it. The other thing that I love about scriptation, because I just really like being paperless and having everything at my fingertip, is that at the, uh, yes. okay, at the top, I don't know if you guys can see, I have tabs that I can toggle between. I have my storyboards. I have my, um, my timeline. I have my schedules. I have everything in there. So I love that I can just go, sorry, I'm in a funny view right now, that I can just go and go through my entire storyboards without having to go to some other document and that it's all right there. Cause that's for me too much to put in one script, but to have my shot list and then say, oh, what am I shooting next? It's right there. So I love that scriptation is like a folder for any document I'm gonna need on set or in prep. Awesome. And everything that you're dealing with there too, Valerie, is shareable. So yeah. you wanna share those 
those storyboards, you know, with your DP, you can do it right from the app. Yeah, and I'll mark them up. Like, you know, in my storyboards, there's certain pages that, you know, this shows us what the VFX shots are. So everything with a, a little dot has a, is a VFX shot. So on the day or the night before, I can send it to my AD, my VFX supervisor, my DP, and we all know what is a specialized shot. So it's just so much faster than talking about it. And, you know, in the era of uh, post-COVID, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Um, we're gonna wanna spend as little time together as we can for safety. So to be able, I mean, for no other reason, but, you know, 20, 30 people in a concept meeting or in a production meeting, why should we expose ourselves when we can get on a Zoom like this, share our screen or share our notes ahead of time and know exactly what we're referring to? I think it just really helps minimize risk. Yeah, that, that's one of the awesome features. I, I It took me two years before I started adding facing pages <laughs> and I was kind of kicking myself um, uh, that I was missing the opportunity to kind of mold my shot list directly into the script and have everything in one place. Um, but we do actually have a, a video that we can show um, with a little bit of a tutorial on that. So we can jump to that really quick before we come back. Hi, Rob Morrow here, actor, director, producer, and this is my scriptation. One of my favorite features um, is the amazing facing pages. And what that basically is, is like back in the old days, we would flip the page of, of a script for a blank page on the back and put our notes there. I lay out the script in two pages. So I have a blank page and I have my script page. On that blank page, I can add all my notes, all my photos, all my, my production stills, all my, my set designs and have them right there and carry them forward. Uh, as each draft comes out. So I hit document preview, I hit edit, I said get all these tools, including facing pages, which is what I'm after. I hit facing, it asks me if I wanna add them. I say yes, boom, and it inserts them, it knows exactly where to put them, and now I have a blank page between every page of the script. And I can move them around, or I can add more, um, I can have them with lines on them if I want, or I can have them blank, I can have them in certain colors. This alone makes my life a thousand times easier. I've been uh, making movies and TV shows for forever now, and this app, Scriptation, has absolutely, joyfully changed my workflow for the better. Amazing, so hopefully that, um, I saw a few questions of just about the <clears throat> workflow on that, so that should answer some of that for folks. Um, and again, that's like an amazing option. I, I found for myself, I just use it to have sometimes the extra page to scribble notes on because I, I still like that tactile sense of writing notes. Um, and it just gives me a place to write sloppy notes electronically. Um, I know Spiller, you've got some other uh, tips that uh, you can share. Um, sure. I also just, just quickly, just because it came up uh, organically, I know we want to talk about it. And, and Mary Lou Bell, I asked a question earlier um, about how, how do we utilize this in like, you know, remote meetings when we're prepping a show, everyone's in their own house or hotel room or, you know, different part of the world. We're getting together and we're talking about the same thing. You know, we're all learning how to share our computer screens. And, it, you know, how do you share your iPad? if that's where you're working from. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I found out yesterday on another call that the person hosting the meeting has to have it set up so that you can either airplay or have a hardwired connection with your device. Um, once you do, it, it goes pretty smoothly. You know, for this sort of thing where um, I'm trying to, you know, where Val and I are trying to show you what part of the screen you're touching, it's a little, you know, awkward occasionally because I'm reaching for a, a mouse, which I would never use on my iPad. You know, I'd just be touching it, uh, you know, and, and for sharing information, I wouldn't need to, you know, no one needs to know what button I'm pushing or how I'm working this wizardry behind the scenes, but we're trying to be a little more clear with it here. Um, but yeah, so having said that, let me uh, share the screen now and get to the correct mouse. Okay. 
Mike, can I just interject that it's yeah. super helpful because when we we had to suspend uh, prep for my movie and came back to LA and my DP and I were able to just keep working remotely um, shot listing. So we would get on a Zoom call and talk about you know how we wanted to shoot a scene and he'd have an idea and I'd be like, wait, what? And then he would draw it. He'd take control of the screen and he'd draw on, on his script and then I would take it. And so it added this whole layer of just being able to communicate maybe even better than if we were in person because you're probably not relying on drawing stuff for each other in quite the same way. So for that's sure. how it really helped. I, I, I think it's great. So let me show you guys here. Well, I started to do the, the sides and there's a, there's a number of cool things that, uh, that you could do with that. So let me just switch over to that day one tab again. Now, for instance, you know, on a typical set of sides, you, you would have that, the, these sort of black lines drawn. I'll do them live for you. Yeah, that, that thing, right? And you can do that if you want. And, and someone asked a question uh, on the chat, which I happen to see, uh, about the production office. If the production often pushes out uh, PDF sides, can you just bring those into the app? Absolutely. And if they do it from the actual script, then you can import your own notes into the sides. So it's super convenient. It would save people like me you know, a good amount of time each night because I'm a little prep crazy. But say this was distracting. I didn't want to see those, those lines there, so I'm just going to get rid of them. But I still don't want that, the dialogue from scene four quite so present. So I use this, this little tool here. Let me try and use this. So I use this thing right here, that box, okay? And I have that set up as, on one of my presets to just basically wipe everything out. So now that's poking through. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm selecting that. I'm just going to delete that. Now I've got room up there. I could add a photo if I wanted. I could, I could select the pen and do a little sketch and draw on some camera angles or something. So it just becomes usable real estate. But maybe that's, you don't want that because you want to see what the scene before it was. So, okay. I have a different preset for that that box, which is sort of like a, a 50%. So I can do that quickly. So it's sort of, it's there, I can refer to the dialogue, but I know that scene five is the, the scene that I'm focusing on. Now here I've inserted a, you know, a shot list that the drawings I did on a different app I did a screenshot that I imported them as photos. Um, the rest of this I did in the app this morning because this is not a real shot list because I don't want all you people stealing my shots. Mm -hmm. um, so I made this all up. Uh, but fans of the Mindy Project might recognize this if you're really paying attention. Um, and like anything else, you can you can zoom way in. You know, and frankly, I use this app for filling out like insurance forms or student permission slips. I use for any PDF. I've done my taxes on it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I've got every draft of every script of every show that, that I've worked on in the past five years on here. And, you know, it's amazing. One thing that comes up a lot on comedies is you're shooting the scene and you know, the joke's okay, but it's really not working. So you want to try and come up with uh, an alt joke. So the cast, maybe the writer, you know, will huddle a video village, come up with something, say it a couple times. The script supervisor's trying to write it down as fast as they can. People are scratching it onto their sides. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, so I have a preset in my text box, right? Which I just selected there. which is the same font and in the same size, somehow it's changed, changed back, the, the same size as the script. 
So when I insert this, I'll change that duplex module three to, let's see, duplex 420-A, exclamation point, it's a lot funnier. So now I can take that and I can actually just drop that right over the existing dialogue in there. Now I've got a little bit of color in this text box so that I remember that that's an onset revision. Now, if we like that, I can take a screenshot of this, airdrop it to the actor. I can, I can send the whole script or the whole page to the production office and they can get it to the writers and officially enter it, you know, get it to post-production, all that stuff, just instantly shared. But another cool thing is like if, if that were a little, if it were sort of a wordy phrase and wasn't just some stupid bit of gibberish like I just wrote, it can be hard to transcribe that, you know, in the middle of the set. But on the, on the keyboard, let's see, do we see that here? I don't know if you guys can see this or not. There we go. So there's the microphone down there at the bottom of the keyboard. You guys can see that? Um, if you select that, you can actually just record the line. So I touch the text box. I've got the, the, the cursor blinking. I hit this. I don't think it should be a duplex module three at all. Boom. Now here, of course, that's, there's not quite enough room for that. Brilliant dialogue. But there it is, just dropped in. So that that is definitely one of my uh, favorite little hacks. Yeah, that's super great. The, what about um, I know you are a big fan of layers as well. Yes, layers are cool. I have some set up here in the table draft, I believe. So I've just switched to a different version just for this demonstration. Now, on the top of the screen, there's this layers button. So this is my production draft. I hit tone meeting and it's going to switch over. Now I can have questions set up in here that I want to ask the, the showrunner. I can have their notes that I can just cross reference as I'm shooting. So this is, you know, it's the same script, but this is, this is a layer that I can toggle to see when I want to. Um, you could also have notes for the DP and the production designer that you can then just send to them. So all your, all your specific notes that you can send to them, they can also send you their notes and you can lay those right over your script, choose to see them at any time or not. I mean, another thing I do is, is if I create a new layer, which you do by going to this little thing, the little ellipsis there, the new layer, I'll just call this shooting. Now choose that layer. Basically, anytime you create a new layer, it's going to bring you back to the clean script. So now, you know, as we're shooting the, the scene, I can make little notes and, oh, they got that word wrong. This is great. Yes, two checks on that one. You know, so you can, you can have sort of a running tally. You could, every take could be a different color if you wanted. Uh, it's, and, and again, you shoot that scene, you've got all your notes in there, maybe take a moment to clean it up, send it to the editor while you're lighting your next scene. You know, it's like, get in front of it. It's just, it's going to be all about sharing information. It's always about sharing information, but, but now more than ever. That's awesome. So now those are kind of like the tried and true things that you guys probably use the most layers. Uh, obviously, you can't do anything without annotations, uh, facing pages, transferring notes. What are some of the things that you would consider a hack? Like other people may not have thought about this functionality with scriptation, but you figured it out over the course of uh, your shoots. Because I imagine there's a trial and error. I know for me, it, it took like five episodes before I figured out how I wanted my paper notebook to be be, be, uh, be uh, organized. Um, what are the things that you guys kind of go to as a little advantage? 
I can talk about that because uh, Steve has received many 4 a.m. phone calls from me when I'm shooting on the East Coast. And I'm like, ah, help me with this because I'm shooting in three hours. And he's always right there. So I've, I've assembled a whole bunch of um, hacks that I can share. Um, the first one I think is really important that I haven't come across anyone else doing is if you're shooting a block of episodes, um, more than one, I make really good friends all the time with the script coordinator. And I ask them to make me a script that has both scripts, both episodes in one and create that PDF. And every time there's a new draft to send me the, the, double, the double episode. And my DP wants that, my AD wants that. I think everybody actually wants that because when you're on a scout, you wanna be turning to the same page number. You don't wanna be flipping between different scripts if you're going, if it's a location-based scout. When you're in a location, you're talking about all the scenes for that location in two episodes. You wanna have one document for that. So, so that's something I, I discovered last summer. I also, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I don't use sides like Spiller. I love bookmarks. I'm a huge fan of bookmarks. Um, just going back to my script. So, you know, when you're going, you know, maybe you'll shoot five scenes a day. And in the old days, I'd go home and I'd spend, it takes a long time, like an hour, like pulling out all the pages that I'm shooting the next day, putting them in a second thinner notebook, putting little tabs on, numbering them, and getting ready for the next day. Now, when I'm on like my last setup, I will take out my script and I'll erase all the bookmarks that I had from the previous day and then tab all the bookmarks for the next day and I'll show you guys how to do that. And what I love about it is if I'm on, you know, an office set and we're walking to the kitchen set, that short walk from one stage to the other, I just hit one button and I'm ready. I'm not getting to rehearsal and trying to catch up with the actors who've already turned to the page because they weren't in the scene before. So. I'm a huge fan of, um, of bookmarks, so I will show you guys how to do it. So up here, you see this little um, a bookmark, this little thing that's grayed. Um, you basically turn to the page that you want to bookmark, and then the open book next to it. Um, sorry, it's, I have to keep flipping between uh, the two things. So the open book next to it has all my different scenes. In this case, I bookmarked them for the presentation today, but you can imagine one through six are scenes for the day. And so basically you go to the page you want to bookmark. Um, so let's go to, uh, you know, after annotation. So let's actually, let's use, let's use this one. So I go to another page and I can, um, I will unbookmark it right now so you can see. And then just to add it, you hit it and then it shows up in your bookmarks and you can just go, you can edit your bookmarks and then just change the name, right? Scene seven or whatever. And I just discovered this actually yesterday preparing for this, you can reorder these. So maybe I didn't call it scene seven, but, or maybe scene seven's getting shot first, just the way Spiller reordered his sides for the day. I can move that up. I can change all the, order for these different things. And that is one of my favorite aspects of scripting. That's awesome. And I just learned that just now, <laughs> as you were talking, I literally was like, oh, well, this last have different, different names. We, we've learned so much from each other. I mean, I think that's the coolest thing. If, if we all start using it, it's such a great way for, you know, we'll come up with even new ideas that maybe Steve Vitolo never thought of. I also want to show you guys one of my favorite things, which is the audio um, function. So if you go to where your um, pictures are, where you would insert a picture, and you hold down on that, and you can go to sound, you can toggle the sound. And what this does is this creates a place where you can record. So you hit sound, and then you just tap somewhere on your script where you want to insert it. Okay, and then you'll see it says edit, note, copy, save. So if you, at the bottom though, you'll see there's a record button and a stop button. So here is a great place to record a song. Like maybe you know your actors need to be in a really emotional place. And so you have a song that you want to play for them or a song you know you're going to use in the edit that you've talked to the music supervisor about. You know it's affordable. So hopefully it'll stay in your edit and you play that for them. I did this on Suits with Donna and Harvey. They had this big emotional scene where she gives the key back and I, I picked a song ahead, made sure it worked for editorial and music and the music clearances, 
played it for the actors on set. They loved it and they would listen to it and I'd play it. There were no words, so I played it on, on set and it was great and it ended up in the episode. So super helpful. I'll show you, I just pre-recorded some royalty free music ahead of time over here, but, oh, so sorry. I'll just, you could also record like, um, you know, if there's dialogue you want to remember. Sorry, I keep pressing the testing, or testing. Or it could be a, a voice memo to yourself. Yeah. Testing, testing, testing. Pressing the, um, or, yeah, exactly. Or here's a song I, I recorded ahead of, you know. So this little something you whipped up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I thought that, you know, actors could use this function too by, you know, getting someone else to record a, the other side of the dialogue and it could be a rehearsal tool. Yeah. You know, just leaving room for their lines and, you know, if that's what they need, it's great. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, it, it sounds like there's just, you've mastered your, your workflow and then you just have some prep time that you devote to making sure that your um, script and scriptation is ready to receive your creative process as you move through the shoot. Yeah, and I think we both like tailor it to our own ways of working. You know, I like to be able to just be very stream of consciousness with it and just what's ever in my head, I can make notes, I can color code them the way I want, I can race it when it gets too messy, but I don't, I don't get too precious about it having to be a certain way. And I, I like that it's, it's like a little appendage for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I used to tell myself that the process of recopying my notes with every new draft was was part of my process, part of my creative process. Like that's how the things got cemented in my head. And I could have, you know, I'd have it all memorized. And I discovered that first of all, that wasn't true. And with all the extra time I had, cause I wasn't recopying, I wasn't recopying the very first idea I had when I read the script, that A, I had more free time to have a better idea, a new idea. Uh, that old idea still exists, it didn't go away, but, but it, it, uh, it, it was sort of limiting in a way, in fact. So, you know, I urge people who are hesitant to try it because, you know, look, I've been doing this a long time and I get it, you know, I, I rolled my script a certain way. I always kept it in my back, you know, right pocket. I told you about pulling off the tabs. You know, there was something about writing with an actual pencil. I, I buy pencils by the caseloads at Staples and had to be a certain kind. And ugh, if the pencil was wrong, that threw me off. You know, God forbid I lost the pencil. You know, it, it, we're, we're malleable, intuitive creatures or artists. We can learn how to use tools and, and do our job better. And Mike, don't you find for me, like not having to transfer my notes at night or prep that little binder, that's an hour a day for me. And that's, that's sleep, that's a phone call to an actor, that's time I can use. And, you know, going into the COVID era of filmmaking, we're going to have shorter days. We're just going to have less shooting time because of safety measures or just, you know, a different, a different working mentality. And so I think that's important. I, you know, one of the things for me, I had no problem getting rid of paper, but I really worried, you know, I'm gonna buy this, these electronics, I'm really worried about an iPad. How do I shoot in the rain? How do I have power? And so for me, a big part of like, and I, I do that, I shoot outside a lot, I shoot on boats. And so for me, a lot of it was gear. And so I think it's important for people to know, like these accessories, like this is a $99, um, uh, case that you just snap on your your iPad and then suddenly it's waterproof and you can still touch the screen and you have this and you know I also have a waterproof um, backpack from Patagonia so the electronic component of it I think between Spiller and I you know he can talk about powering I think that we can answer that for you guys if that's a concern yeah, I mean, I think it's always a good idea, even with your iPhones, to have uh, you know, a, a couple of backup batteries around. Although you can always, you know, charge Video Village and stuff like that. And I like this this little clamp that will you know, opens up and holds the iPad. It'll I clip it to the the 
the mini monitors that you know I use instead of being at Video Village. And I basically create a little, you know, podium for myself. So I've got my script there. And again, you're probably gonna be sitting by yourselves, uh, no matter what our job is for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, and I think that's really gonna be. And when I'm when I'm at the that little mini monitor, I found this cable, and we'll have links for this somewhere in this. That actually, with this connector, this uh, DTAP connector, we'll plug into the block batteries that the camera department uses to power the mini monitors, and you know it ends in a USB, and you know you can. This one has two, so you can power your phone, you can power your your iPad. I have on the back of my iPad this little X clamp, which you can clip this bad boy in and you know it can be a thing you hold hold it with one hand it's got another clamp that you can put on a stand uh, there's this thing which I, I bought but I didn't really use but it like you know so it can sling over your shoulder I used, you know, I just um, messed up my hair too much this a magnetic sleeve on my pencil just pops right on to here and then when I'm shooting outside with the waterproof case, there's a sleeve, a tight sleeve that holds the pencil. And in all these years, I've only had to replace this once, which is, is pretty good. So do you both move through production with only the iPad, like no laptop, just Nothing. one device? Just that and phone. Um, yeah, I have, I, I, I have been carrying a laptop, but it's mainly if I have to to other stuff like emails or something where we have to do a huge volume of typing. Um, and, you know, doing this, preparing for this, you know, is even inspiring me to just do more of the work entirely on the iPad and as much as I can within the app itself. Um, I do get a bit nerdy and goofy. Anyone who's worked with me knows that I do elaborate drawings sometimes, very frustrated artist, uh, but, you can also get a keyboard too. Um, I, I bought this when I bought my iPad expecting to use it. I never use it. I literally just, I just love how light and free scriptation makes you and that, I don't know. Right. It just, I'm it with you. It's like, it's my life. And then for uh, those who, who do use computers, there is a desktop version. So it's not like you have to uh, go and invest in a tablet if you tend to already center your work around a laptop. And, you know, this is super cool, too, because, like, a lot of people don't have free hands on set. And mm -hmm. maybe an iPad is too expensive, or they simply, you know, they have an iPad, but they don't have two free hands. They're pushing dolly, they're holding a boom, they're, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, most of us have a phone in our pocket, right? So this is really cool. I just, I've been trying to get this word out there. Right? So I'm just oh, going to do talk this. Talk about this. This is like great. This. So... Here's the, the, the phone, right? The, the script's on there, my notes are on there, but it's small. Yeah, I could, I could zoom in, do all that, but let's see if I can do this in reverse here. Um, if you just get to, there we go, sorry, it's reverse. At the very top of the screen there, it says reader, okay? So I'll try and do this live, because it's cool. So now, that's like having a set of sides. You know, there's there's nothing on there that you couldn't read, you know, normally. So your whole production can be totally paperless. There's no reason to hand out sides in the morning that people are going to touch and potentially transmit virus and then throw away either 10 minutes or 10 hours later. It's just so wasteful. Right. So let, let's let's do like the the kind of HGTV reveal and take a look at uh, what you have at your fingertips when you hit set, like what each of your script pages might look like so everybody can have an idea of the ways that you can use scriptation to your own style. So this, this is, I think what we each prepared was like what our scripts look like at the end of the day. And a hack I learned actually from Silver Tree, who's my producing director on Suits, because she used to be a script supervisor, 
I will ask my script supervisor if there's a really perfect take or a take that's really indicative of like the right performance for the character if we're like playing around with options. I'll say to my script supervisor, could you please tell me what that take was? And I will write it down. Um, and that's what that pink box is. I'll write that down and make any other notes. And then I'll screenshot this at the end of the day and email that to my editor. So my editor can have guideposts for what, what takes are the benchmarks for the performance. Or, you know, sometimes they'll see the tone notes if they're not too private and then they'll know how to shape a scene. But I, it's so hard to find time to get on the phone or send an email to an editor and tell them everything about the day. But if I can make notes for them in my script and just screenshot it and then email it, um, that takes two seconds. And I've had every editor tell me they really appreciated it. It just got them off on the right foot so that their editor's cut was a lot more aligned with, with uh, where, we, where I wanted to go in my director's cut. And Valerie, you could also, you could add a voice memo to it. As yeah, well. yeah. So, you know, you then send that document the editor opens it up in scriptation and they they can hear your thoughts you know from the horse's mouth exactly so. yeah after you call cut if everyone's moving on you know you can just take that time to just talk right to your ipad while yeah. it's fresh while That's it's fresh great. right and yeah, so i guess you know my, my page is you know really just as a contrast to, to valerie's i mean and, and an example that you know, we all use this different ways. Um, there's no one way to do it. There's no one way to mark up a script. We all have mnemonic devices. We all have color coding that, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what we do, you know, Valerie's also got on her page, you know, this this overall, much like I was doing with the, the white box when I was blanking stuff out. Yeah. You know, she, she's overlaying a color, which could be great for like, this is night exterior, or this is a certain character, or, you know, whatever, you know, quick read device you need so that even if you went to the, the thumbnail view, you know, you could very quickly see like, oh boy, there's a lot of night exteriors in this episode, or, you know, this actor is heavy, or, yeah. you know, even, um, whatever. That, that's a really good point, Spiller. In this case, this is a scene with three different sets being intercut, but we're all shooting it on the same huge tarmac, but in three different spots. So I needed a very fast way to know I'm done here. This next part is over there. And just like your brain processes these things so much faster than if you're trying to, you know, just look at words. So thank you for pointing that out. I think that's a really important function or flashbacks, letting people know, oh, this is a flashback. We're not shooting that right now, but you need to know what that is and you don't want to take time to read it. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. So the, uh, I mean, you've, you've touched on it. I feel like uh, I was going to ask you what, how you might use scriptation in post value mentioned uh, shooting the notes over from uh, or shooting a page over with your notes on what takes you like and Spiller added the voice memo, which I'm going to be taking um, as well. But is there anything else that you do uh, that you use for post-production and, uh, you know, your process benefits from scriptation? Yeah, well, I mean, I certainly, again, bring my copy of the script with all my notes into the edit room when I'm in there. I mean, but as much as I can, I try to, to share stuff ahead of time. I just think that that's, you know, that's good filmmaking, great collaboration and, you know, and, and increases the odds that you're going to have that first cut be as close to what you're looking for as possible. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just all about sharing information and, and, you know, often if you're directing or you're directing and producing or you're producing stuff too, you're dealing with many episodes at, at many stages of, of production and post-production. And I mean, I'm sure we've all gotten into vans with those people who have like three binders. Yeah, <laughs> all these massive scripts and supporting material and the call sheets and production reports or the production designer's got all this, you know, artwork in there and stuff like that. And I'm having got my iPad. That's, that's it. And it's all right there. I mean, from within the app, I can take pictures on a scout 
drop it in the, the script where I want it, start drawing on top of it, you know, painting in the green screen, you know, it's, you know, and by the time I'm back in production, man, everyone on the crew has it. Right. So it just seems like there's so much to be taken advantage of. And, you know, now more than ever, clearly, and I'm probably overselling this and it's not, it's just, I'm passionate about it. I mean, it's, I want to get back to work too. So this is as close as I've gotten. And I've never months. found it to be limiting. I mean, you know, sometimes various software, you feel like it, it has the tastes and objectives of the designer, but there's never been anything I haven't been able to do, or I've, you know, called Steve and said, how do I do this? Or I figure out some new hack, but it's, it, it's not very prescriptive. It really is like, here's a toolbox, use me how you want it. So I feel like it's, will transfer so well to every department um, and just, just get us on the same page. I mean, how much more fun would it be to be on set if you knew exactly why you're shooting a shot or know why you're doing the scene when you're spending hours of your life there because the director shared their blocking plan with everybody or their visual look or their lookbook with everybody ahead of time. You're like, oh, this is, this is why we're here. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to tell a story that entertains or uplifts or, but we're all making it because we are. And in a world with perhaps maybe shorter days, um, you know, and, and, and more demands on your time, the more that everybody is kind of coordinated around a specific vision and what we're trying to achieve and they can put their ducks in a row to get there quicker, um, mm -hmm. the less of an impact, at least creatively, um, time constraints and COVID realities um, will have on what we do as creative storytellers, I think. 100%. One, one of the greatest tragedies I think of, you know, as I picture our, our workflow going forward, what our, what our sets will look like is, you know, the thing that I've enjoyed for 30 years of the collaboration, the spirit of in there with the crew and the cast and just we're on it together. And I love being jammed into a 15 pass van and talking and gossiping and all that stuff. And just, you know, sadly, it sounds like we're going to be spending more time physically further apart. Um, you know, at least certainly in the early days as we start this up and get back to work because we have to be safe it's clear so i really believe that that this and you know many other technologies too and 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 you know roads that that we're taking paths we're going down that that are designed to to help keep our cast and crew safe uh i think this will be invaluable uh, part of that and that we can all literally be on the same page uh you know by sharing the pages that we have Right. Yeah. Sounds like it might be a good time for some Q and A here. Yeah, I must say the the text chat. I mean, I can't. I don't have time to read most of it, but I'm glad it's so active and engaged. Right. I yeah. hope it's good. Exciting, getting ideas. Lots of reading it. <laughs> All right. So how how are we doing this? Are we just uh, pulling this from Steve? Do you want to guide us? So I'll pull from uh, some of the things that I, I see. So I think that um, well, let's see. Uh, this question is about final draft and stuff other screenwriting programs. This is PDF based. So if you get it, any document you have that's in PDF, can you can import into Scriptation, note it up, and and output it. Your shot list, um, can just make your shot list from Word, turn it into a PDF, and you can bring it right in, Any, anything. Yeah. And there is I, Windows version. Um, there's, I don't believe there's an Android version yet for the phone, but Steve might jump in and correct me, but I think that that's been discussed. And, and I, I noticed a lot of uh, concern about um, kind of the most uh, exciting basic feature of transferring notes 
Um, you will everything if they if they delete a scene, if they read if they add scenes, and and you get twenty two A or whatever. All of your notes are going to transfer. I don't know how, but but they if if it becomes what was on twenty two ends up on page you know four pages later, all of that stuff transfers just fine. Um, I so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I think that the only thing that you might want to consider is how how large you write things with a pencil, because if you write anything too big, it might have uh, it might uh, sometimes land in a different place. But everything's there. I've never had an issue. I've never lost a file, and it's been uh, a lifesaver. I saw a question about um, uh, will colored pages be imported as colored pages, and I think that that can be done because yeah i saw that like in rob morrow's script in the video he's like oh i always how do you get those well, colored pages that? but i think if the the script coordinator you know or writer's assistant can output from the final draft document i think that's a uh, an option that they can toggle and then create a pdf that will have colored pages but or you could do an overlay here. box yeah oh that's a good idea to be clear they'd come and they'd say it at the top what draft it is, but they won't, you won't actually get pink and goldenrod pages in your new draft. Like they won't actually be the color, correct? But they, overlay. They, they can be if, if it's done in the writer's room. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's how, that's how Rob had that done. That's my understanding. Again, Steve, jump in if, if I'm getting this wrong, but I believe that that's the case. All right. Is there any? I'm just scrolling. Uh, you oh, know. I, saw, I saw a question. I'll answer. Sorry. Um, you know, the big for all the people who are starting from the beginning, they're wondering what size iPad and people may have different opinions, but I'll share mine. For me, the 10 and a half inch, which I think is now 11. I don't think they sell that 10, but that as a director is perfect for me because it's some people want to get the biggest so they can see the most, but it gets really heavy. Um, so I use the lightest case I can, which is a little leather case, and that's the size that works really well for what I do. And I get the most storage because I'll take my location photos on a tech scout or whatever, and I'll want to just store like crazy and just pull from my photo library. So if anyone's like, because I remember I was that way, what do I even buy? Like, what's my outlay to do this? Um, that's what I would suggest. And I saw uh, a question, depending upon your orientation, I saw some concern about can you see your face in pages and obviously if you're in, in, in the vertical mode, uh, you're going to have that one page at a time and then you can look at your pages next to each other side by side and you can even change the configuration further. So it's customizable to how you need to work and what you need to see. Um, Someone asked about moving the toolbar. Yes, you can do that. You can grab it at the bottom, click and hold it, and you can just drag it to the other side of the screen. You can drag it to the top of the screen, uh, any, yeah. anywhere you like. It's very flexible. And I, I think folks will find it's, it's all really intuitive. Not everyone has, um, uh, there's varying levels of experience with different apps. Obviously, like, um, like if you've used Photoshop for, for one minute, you know that you can click on the eye and turn off the, le the, the layers. Trial and error will reveal to you exactly what the um, functionality is. Um, and so it would be a great opportunity to just kind of play around um, in the same way you will with any new tool. Um, you play around, see how it works for you, and then you start kind of having light bulb moments where you're like, oh, I can make this work for me because I think all of us probably use features that were not designed perhaps uh, for how we use them, but they like make us super confident and comfortable um, in how we approach the day. Um, so I guess we should kind of get to the final remarks and talk about how scriptation is going to help you guys move forward in this new world um, whenever it is that we get back on set safely um, and do this thing that we love to do. Um, so talk about, I think for me, the biggest things are communication. The more that I can prep and ha not only be able to share my ideas with my departments, but like my costume designer 
if they can send me like the fitting photos, you know, laid out for the particular scene. So I can see, oh, so there's no miscommunication. Like, oh, they wear that in that scene. Oh, no, 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 I meant that other scene. And that's five phone calls, you know, um, or production designers sending you, you know, a set design attached to the actual scene. We can just do more work ahead of time. And then when we talk, it's a lot more efficient and it's also just not in person, uh, which will be really important. So I'm excited for more people to use it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've sort of answered that question a number of times already. Uh, just because I want to get back to work so badly, I want us all to get back to work. I want to you know, do this thing that I love so much and uh, you know, I'm very passionate about this app because it's it's just changed the way I approach everything. Um, it's 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 really just transformed how I do my job, and that's super cool. And it is more flexible and shareable and scalable. You know. You can have every you can have a tab open with every single crew list of every yeah. job you've ever done. Uh, you know, for for line producers or you know, ads who want to have the call sheets and production reports and all that stuff right at your fingertips. It's just there's nothing like it. So, uh, Spiller, you I, you had a good idea when we were like you know pre gaming the seminar. You said something, you know, tone meetings are, you know, I don't know that writers are going to be able to be on set as much. And so for them to be able to use it and put their tone notes in, you know, a note that's discreet, you know, in private that we can open up. A, it's like the tone meetings one to five days before we shoot to be able to go back and refer to that or have them be able to send layers with, you know, their thoughts ahead of time yeah, that's that's what i've been pushing for a while yeah I think. but when i talk to writers i always try to sell it that way i'm just like <laughs> you know you have to cut out so much of a script to get it down to the the length that the studio wants and you know so all the sort of descriptive information that would help lead the director and and department heads you know all this valuable information is gone that they people know about it. it was discussed you know they've been writing the script for eight weeks so whether it's just material that was cut out or it's helpful shortcuts and backstory that would be useful i mean if i were a writer i i would fill pages of backstory and mm -hmm. notes about cast members or things that other people tried in a scene like this that didn't work and i want to make sure you don't fall you know down that path so and just send it as a layer and before you you know go in, go into a scene you could you could toggle that layer it's take the advice or not but you know it's there it just seems like we're there's so much opportunity you know and, and look don't get me started well you did get me started so i'm gonna start you know for directors <laughs> yeah we get hired and you know it's our job to mine information and you know if we've never done a show before we don't know the personalities we don't know the pitfalls we, you know, we're, we're just trying to glean information and, and read between the lines and understand the subtext. And it's, it, it's very subjective, you know, and we want to do a good job. We want to elevate the episode, but we also need to know the writer's intent. And it's not always evident. So anything that can help us, you know, I, I again, if I were a writer, I'm not, I would put that I would put that information in there and make sure the director got it. Can I um, add one more thing? I see a question. It's kind of related to how we'll work in the post COVID era that, you know, for me being paperless is a, a huge, huge priority. And I'm glad that this is forcing us to do that. Um, so this question is about how can we be, um, you know, more, less wasteful and set don't underestimate how much can just be digital. Your floor plans. I asked my production designer to send me them all in PDFs. 
and then I open them up on my iPad and I screenshot them and put them in my camera photo library and I bring them in and I draw on them in scriptation. Um, a prep schedule. I don't need a paper copy on my desk every day. Just email it to me and I'll pop it right in my scriptation and then it's right next to my script. I don't need any documents. I, I really just never ever touch paper. Yes. Location scouting, I don't need the itinerary. We don't need of those printed that just like lay in the van at the end it's exactly. so wasteful let's please get out of that habit yeah. i've seen a lot of questions about um the pro version versus the free version i at the top off the top of my head i i can't tell you necessarily which feature is with which version if if you can swing it i i urge you to to get the pro version because there's you know i know that it has everything and you know, it's, it'll be the best money you've ever spent. I mean, it, it's just your time is valuable. Um, my time's valuable. And this helps me do my job better and have more free time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and I, I and I would just put it in the context, like with with the um, reality of COVID and the fact that we've been home, I now have learned that I can cook. Right. <laughs> I mean, I know, now I know. And it's because I've had the time and I, I feel like, you know, start with the free graduate to the pro um, as you as you play around and recognize that like, oh, there's so much that I can do here. I can go back to old scripts. If you have if you're like me and you've got your folders of your shows like you can go pull the yellow the golden rod and then the whatever draft after that or and make your notes on it and then transfer those notes to the next one and you can really begin to see right now without the stress because i feel like there's probably uh a, a hesitation because when you think about doing it right before the next job you might say i don't want to stray from what i know um but now you have the time to, to tool around and figure out um how well it works for you so and I'll mention, Pete, um, the DGA Women's Steering Committee asked me to give a talk on July 21st. I think it's 4 p.m. PST. Just check their PT, check their website. But if you uh, want, you know, a refresher, uh, I'll, I'll do some of this again. Not nearly as well without these guys, um, or maybe they can come with me. But um, yeah, there'll be more opportunities to hear all this again. Awesome. So if, if you guys don't have any parting uh, brilliance um, to top it off with, uh, anybody uh, last looks before we uh, get out of here? Well, I, I wish I had, I wish we had time to, I'm afraid I'm not doing anything else, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just to answer all these questions, because they're all really great questions. And, um, you know, there's, with the, with the pro version, it is cloud-based. I'm not certain if it is for the free, but it syncs across devices. So the notes you make on your iPad show up on your phone, show up on your desktop, show up on your, you know, your other iPad, if you have one, if you're one of those people like me, um, you know, and, and, and I, there was a question about running out of battery and, you know, you know what, carry a battery. It's a good idea or have a cigarette lighter adapter uh, you know, to, to plug into a van and I mean, I have an electric car too, so I'm used to that sort of battery anxiety, but it's really, it's really pretty easy to manage. And, you know, you turn off your Wi-Fi if you don't need it. And the, the app works without Wi-Fi. It doesn't, you don't have to have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, so that I'll, do a, I'll do a little public service announcement. I always turn my Wi-Fi off unless I'm sharing a page because I just think I'm, we get too much radiation anyway. I think as a scientist, I'm super concerned about that. So as that a was, Harvard educated scientist. Yes, so as listen, we've got the cell towers uh, coming to our school. I'm very up on the subject. And so I just am in airplane mode when I use it. So if that's a concern to you about holding this device all day long, just flip it to airplane mode. And please do that actually. Awesome. Well, everyone, if you want to dig deeper, there are videos online, uh, or if you want a refresher, um, much of what we've shown you outside of the uh, screen sharing tutorials can be viewed again. 
Um, make sure you follow Scriptation on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Scriptation. Um, visit the website where you can get a bunch of resources. Um, and then like we've all been saying, like once you get the app, play around with it and uh, figure out how to customize it for your needs. It works for you and allows you to move at your own speed. Um, I'd like to thank Val and Spiller and Steve Vitolo um, for this platform to talk about this. Um, and I look forward to communicating with even more clarity with all the folks that we make TV and film with. So everybody stay safe and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so Pete. Much. Wear a mask. Great job. Wear a mask. Yes. Thank you, Val. Great job, everybody. Mm -hmm.